now what we're going to do is talk about the time value of money and this is easily one of the most important topics in finance and certainly in this course. So first let's uh, think about this graphically and talk about timelines. What timelines do, and, and you're not required to use them, but as we get into more complicated problems, you might like these if you're a visual learner or a visual thinker, because what they do is they show us the timing of cash flows. So you can see an example on this slide, and tick marks indicate the various periods. So remember that time zero is always today. Time one is going to be one period from now, whether that's a year or a month or a week or whatever. And we don't show it on this slide, and we rarely do in this course. But if we had time negative one, that would have been one period ago or one period in the past. So now if we wanted to draw a timeline, let's say, for example, um, we have $100, a lump sum of $100 that's due in two years. So we're going to have a two-year timeline. So we have a tick mark for today, a tick mark for one year from now, and a tick mark for two years from now. And we tend to put the interest rate somewhere on our timeline. We don't know what it is yet, so we just have I percent for the interest rate, and then we're showing the cash flows at the bottom. So this is $100 due in two years. So we're going to put it underneath the two tick mark. Same way, if we had a three year ordinary annuity, an annuity means we've got the same cash flow occurring for multiple periods. So three periods of $100. So now you see that our timeline is going out to three periods and we've got three cash flows of $100. What if we have an uneven cash flow stream? The timeline will still work, but what's happening here is that the individual cash flows are different. So now we've got a three-year cash flow stream. We have a negative cash flow today, so it's going to cost us something to make money later on. So it's going to cost us $50, and then we expect to receive cash flows of $175 and $50 over the next three periods. Let's go ahead and talk about future value because in the time value of money context, future value tends to be a good starting place because it's kind of the simplest um, mathematically and conceptually. So let's think about this. What is the future value, we'll abbreviate that as FV, of an initial $100 lump sum? So I've got $100 today and I want to know what it's going to be worth three years from now if I'm earning 4% per year. So when we're trying to find a future value, we call that compounding. Later on, you'll see if we're trying to find a present value, we're going to call that discounting. But the future value can be solved using a step-by-step -step, um, or a financial calculator method or a spreadsheet method. Um, I'm going to suggest that you start getting cozy with your financial calculator because that's probably going to be the fastest and most convenient way for you to do this. But here's our timeline. Remember, future value, so we want to know what the value is at the end of the three years of $100 that we have today at time zero. Now we have an interest rate, 4%. So all we've done with our timeline is just kind of diagram the question. So here's how we do it. And remember, we've got a few methods that we can use. Um, we can use step by step, meaning we can figure out what that $100 that we have today is going to be worth at the end of each of the next three years. So at the end of one year, it's going to be $100 times 1.04 because we've got 4% interest rate and we know we're going to at least have our $100, so that's where the 1 comes in, and the .04 is the interest that we're getting. So at the end of the first year, we'll have $104. At the end of the second year, what we'll do now is just use that same context, take the $100 lump sum times 1 plus the interest rate, but because now we've got it for two years, we're going to raise that 1.04 to the second power. So that means at the end of two years, we'll have 108.16.
Same thing for three years. Now our exponent is going to be a three because it's a three-year investment. So we'll have $112.49. So what this illustration tells us is that our general formula then is going to be that the future value after n years is going to be the present value times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the nth power. Now if we're using the calculator, and again, this is what I suggest, you're going to use, let me grab my calculator, you're going to use the time value of money functions. So here's my BA2 plus professional. You want to use that third row. Hopefully you can see this in my, my camera. Um, you want to use that third row that has five keys. And so those are these orange um, buttons in the middle of the slide. So in this same problem, n is equal to 3. Our interest rate is 4, and we're always going to put interest rates in as a whole number using this time value of money worksheet, we call it, in the calculator. And the present value is 100. We're going to call that negative 100 because technically this is going to be a cash outflow to us. Outflows are negative, inflows are positive. This is a cash outflow because I'm going to take $100 out of my pocket and put it in the bank. And then in three years, I'm going to get back that future value. Before we get to the future value, though, let's look at the payment. My payment is zero because I'm not doing anything else in between today and three years from now. I'm not making any payments. I'm not receiving any payments. So if I put in those four numbers for N, the interest rate, the present value, and the payment, then I can hit Compute Future Value, and it should give me that result.